Welcome to Gun Deals. Today I'm really excited to go over with you my personal Benelli M4 shotgun. Uh, here it is here. This is imported from Italy and um, it is a semi-auto shotgun and as far as I'm concerned this is probably the best semi-auto shotgun in the world. We will go over it. I'll show you the upgrades I've already done to it and why I've done them and uh, we'll take it apart, show you how to take it apart and uh, we'll tell you how it shoots etc. So let's get dive right on in. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do and get right out of the, out of the way is um, I've changed three major parts to the shotgun to make it what's called 92R compliant. I did just say this is um, this is the boring part of the video, so I apologize. Um, but this is an imported shotgun from Italy, as I said, and um, it comes when it comes. It comes with a restricted tube like this, um, so it can only hold five uh, shotgun shells. Now you can do one of two things. Um, you can buy a new tube, which I did, or you can uh, remove the, the restrictor and you can purchase an extension to go on here as another option. One of the, the three things I did. Now, to, to also make sure it's 92R compliant, you've got to make sure that the parts that you buy are made in the US of A and they are stamped. I don't make the laws, you know what it's like. So make sure whatever parts you put on to make sure your gun is 92R compliant, as I say, they're stamped in the US of A. Now the other changes I made, one is internal, it's the follower, and again, when I open the shotgun up, I'll show you what, what I'm talking about, but uh, this is the follower that comes with it. I switched it out to a US made one, it is stamped made in the US of A. Sorry. Um, and then the last thing that I did was um, I put on a new uh, buttstock. Again, uh, there's nothing wrong with the original, but to make sure I stay compliant with the changes that I made, I put a made in the US of A Mesa Tactical um, buttstock on there. All right, sorry about that, but it's just important that you know what you're getting into when you're buying a Benelli M4. Yes, I think it's an absolutely phenomenal shotgun, but there is some little things that you have to be aware of. Do you have to make these changes? No. You know, you can shoot it just the way it comes. You don't have to do anything, but um, for me, I wanted the, um, the extra shells hold you know to be able to put some extra shells in there and to do that i had to make those changes uh, this is the oem stock that comes with the benelli m4 as i said it works just fine um, so you have a limb saver on the back here these two parts on either side is for mounting a sling and moving forward you have a grip here it's a rubber oval molded grip it feels really good in the hand um, again it's a it's a great uh, stock there's absolutely nothing wrong with this whatsoever. All right, so moving right along, uh, we come to the ghost sights. This is the first uh, shotgun I've personally ever bought with ghost sights, and they're really, really cool. Um, and it's gonna be really hard to show these on camera. Basically, at the rear here, you have like a little peep sight, and then on either side, you have two white dots. Um, and then you have a, an adjustment here, so you can change the elevation of the sight. And then at the front here, you have a, a nice, you guys can see this you have a nice uh, sight at the front here again it is white dot these sights work extremely well um so much so that you, you for me you don't really need to put an optic on here you can if you wish but these sights work really really well very impressive now um, you'll probably notice i have a shell holder on the side here uh, this is another attachment that i did myself um, when you buy a benelli m4 it will come with a standard pick rail on the top here um, and it's just a couple of screws you can take out if you want to change it or if you don't um, just leave this on obviously um, but it comes with a pick rail as I say I have just switched it out uh, moving forward uh, we have the uh, charging handle uh, again this is another upgrade I did this is a uh, GG and G uh, charging handle the one that comes with it works perfectly fine I'm just the kind of person who likes to tinker with my guns a little bit and change some things out and just see what works, what works best for me. Um, so I did change this out. Now it's important you know how to change these out because you have, or at least remove this because for takedown you have to be able to do that. So you're just simply going to uh, push down, pull and turn. It's kind of, there we go. And it comes right on out. And uh, again, you'll need to do that. I'll show you why when we take this down. To push it back in, it's in just fine. Uh, this part here, is the bolt release so when the, and again this is another upgrade it's a gng gg and g um, but the standard one that comes with it is a, it's just kind of a little uh little button little dot so it's 
it's okay, but I feel like it's uh, the pad makes it a little easier to manipulate. Maybe in the cold, if you're wearing gloves or something like that, you know. Um, but I do like the pad a lot. Um, just press it, bolt slams forward. Um, I do like this setup a lot. I do recommend it. Not required. It, obviously, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But it is a nice upgrade if you want to do that. Uh, the barrel here is actually an 18 and a half inch barrel. And then we have, as I said, the extended tube. We have a forward mount for our sling right here. Um, and we'll go over this part. This is what we need to take off to take the shotgun down. It does have a forend uh, right here. Obviously, it's not pumped, doesn't move because it's a semi auto shotgun. Um, very, very nice. Okay. The, um, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger is actually pretty dang nice. Uh, cons all things considered, you know, coming from a shotgun. So uh, let's, I mean, again, it's gonna be hard to show you this on camera, but we'll do a close up of the trigger pull in just a second. Um, but let's just, let me have me pull it. We'll, I'll go over what I'm feeling um, and so forth. So let's try this out. Obviously make sure your gun's unloaded if you're doing this, but uh, let's pull that back. And so there's pretty much absolutely no take up on this. That again, let's do the reset. It's got a little bit of let out. Very crisp, positive reset. That's a nice reset. And a nice clean break. Very tactile, very audible on reset and and, uh, and firing. So it's, I was actually, when I first got this, I was actually really impressed with the trigger. Um, I've owned some shotguns in the past, didn't like the triggers. Um, so it's a pretty decent trigger, all things considered being a shotgun. So I am happy with that. Uh, but let's go ahead and check the pull weight on it and uh, we'll see how, see where it comes in. All right, let's check out the pull weight of this trigger. Let's make sure that we are not on safe. So we are not safe. And we are ready to go. All right, let's check this out. So we're gonna use a wheelers trigger pull scale right here and you can probably see now this is a little closer to the camera like there is there's really nowhere for this trigger to go so there's no over travel on it I mean it's literally right there but let's check what the actual weight is here we go I'm gonna go with I'm gonna guess mm, five pounds and I haven't cheated I promise I haven't done this All right, seven pounds. I'm a little surprised. It definitely does not feel like a seven pound, pound trigger. Um, so let's do that one more time. And when I say seven pounds, it's literally just over seven pounds. But let's try this one more time. Came out at seven pounds exactly at that time. Let's just do it one more time for, for giggles. Make sure we are giving you the correct information. Okay, last time this is the third time. Just a hair over seven pounds. So it's about a seven pound trigger. Again, it feels a little lighter to me, but, but it's a great trigger for the shotgun for sure. All right, let's go ahead and take the, the shotgun apart here. Uh, as I said, you're gonna come up to this top piece here. Now, when you unscrew this, oh, sorry, I will lift it up here so you guys can see. Um, be careful because there is a spring in here. Um, now you do have an end piece to keep it in check. Uh, but be aware if that end piece is not there, that spring will fly out because it is under pressure. Um, you are going to have to remove the char charging handle in just a second. But first of all, we are just going to pull up on this upper receiver. Hold the bolt here and then just pull this up and slide this off. Probably went out of shot there. But anyway, that is slid off. And then the forend will just drop off. And this is what makes this Benelli M4 so special. This is the Argo system. Um, it's self-cleaning and it, it just makes the gun freaking amazing. So that is the heart of the gun. That's what makes this gun so special is that part right there. Okay, so now that is off. If you want to take out the bolt, this is what I was saying, you're going to have to be able to take out the charging handle. Sometimes I have, there you go, just pull that out. Make sure the trigger is down when you pull this out. And that is your bolt carrier grip right there. And that is it, that is it stripped down to where you need it to be. And then obviously just go in reverse to put this back together. Again, make sure your uh, hammer is down or you won't be able to get your bolt carrier grip back in. Slides back in. 
take your charging handle, put it back in, back, and I would lock it back, keep it out of the way. Now, it's a little more difficult with this sling attached. So you're gonna take your fore end again, your front end, and then you're gonna put your, your hand guard back in, like so. Slide these back in, so it's all together like so. Okay, from there, you are going to slide the top piece back in, like so. And it should all make sense. Push it down and it is all in place. Take your end cap here. Make sure that's secured properly because this is what really keeps it all together. So make sure that is nice and snug. Okay. Once it is done, you're going to want to function check, bolt release, charge, and lock back open. So once your function check is complete, you are... back together. So there you go. So let's talk about a few extra things with this. Um, let's talk about price. It's expensive. Um, that's the bottom line. It's not a cheap shotgun. Um, you are looking, um, I think I saw them roughly $1,900, um, give or take. Again, with the climate we're in, it's fluctuating a little bit right now with the current uh, time frame. Um, so they are they aren't cheap and then when you add on the if if you want to add on the accessories obviously that adds up also But the big question is is it worth it? And I already told you at the beginning of this video uh, This for me is the best semi-auto shotgun that's ever been made now There is another uh, there is a couple other really good semi-auto shotguns out there um, And I'm not trying to take anything away from them. They are awesome But for me the Benelli M4 is the gold standard uh, for semi-auto shotgun that's just my personal opinion, uh, take it or leave it, but it is a phenomenal shotgun to shoot. Um, and normally when I shoot 10 rounds, 15, 20 rounds through a shotgun, I'm like, I'm done, because it's just not a, it's just not fun to shoot, right? Um, well, with this, and it could be just a, a combination of the Argo system and the limb saver, this is an absolute, I found this to be an absolute pleasure to shoot. I go shooting this, and I'd be shooting 60, 70, 80 rounds every time I went to the range, because I just like shooting it so much, and it wasn't killing my shoulder. So um, so do I recommend it? You already know my answer. Yes, 100%. Uh, if you have the money um, and you, you're looking for a, a phenomenal semi-auto shotgun, I would highly recommend this. Um, no questions asked. So ah, I think that's we've pretty much covered everything, folks. Um, so I think we're pretty much there. So if you have any questions, any comments, please ask them below. I'm always happy to help out wherever I can. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right, until next time, I'll catch you later.